Hey everybody, and thanks for downloading the show. Uh, just a little disclaimer on this one: uh, the original house reveal and the scare zone reveal had not happened yet when we recorded this one, so uh, that will be out on the next show, which should be out on Monday. So enjoy. Bones will rattle, stairs will creak, your outcome's looking pretty bleak. Thunder booms, lightning crashes, leaving boots filled with ashes. As we lay you down to rest, we read the pages of the dead man's digest. What's up, freaks, and welcome to episode 3 of the Dead Man's Digest for the Halloween Horror Nights 26 season. I'm Darren, and the gang's all here. We have Nina. Hello. And Travis. Hey, hey. Hey, how's everybody feeling tonight? Awesome. Good. Yeah, yeah, anybody feeling a little festive? Mm, what do you feeling, mean? Feeling <laughs> a little a little Christmas and Halloween? Yeah. Christmas in July? Wait, it's August. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Because last week, Universal just announced that Krampus will be coming to Halloween Horror Nights. Yay, Christmas! Yes. Yep. I think we all we all had a chance to watch it. Um, I think we can all concur that it is not the uh, a masterpiece <laughs> of a movie, exactly. Um, mm. It's not real good. Yeah. It's not good at all. Yeah, uh, I was talking to Travis earlier on the uh, on Messenger, and um, you know we were saying how similar the beginning is to National Lampoon's Christmas mm-hmm. Vacation. <laughs> so yeah, it's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation without the comedy, just all the boring part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. So we'll see uh, uh, how that goes. I'm sure it's going to be focusing on the uh, the end of the movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike Aiello uh, said on Twitter, and this was also another interesting thing, the maze is being constructed uh, in our second Shrek theater. So we all hmm. thought Chance was going there. She is not going there. Um, so do you think that knocks down uh, the um, notion of there being a 3D house? Yeah, because it does not sound like this one is going to be 3D. So um, I, I really don't see 3D going somewhere else. But uh, with the new tent they're, they're setting up, I mean, it's... It's possible mm-hmm. that they do it there, um, but that's yeah. where, yeah, that's where it looks like Chance is going for now. Of uh, like the, uh, the the map that was leaked or however that came to be. Um, yeah, I, I've heard that uh, people that are that are in the know uh, about Halloween Horror Night said that they are really wondering how that map got out because it's pretty accurate. <laughs> So we're thinking the Chance House is going to go where that that third little tent pop, popped up back there. Yeah, that like Men in Black, Black, right? Yeah, behind the Men in yeah, Black extended gotcha. queue there. So, hmm. yeah, um, he said it will feature the frozen facade of the Engel family home, um, mm-hmm. maniacal gingerbread men invading the family kitchen. Uh, you'll travel <laughs> to the home's attic where toy-like creatures Ugh. lurk amongst the ripped uh, and open presents. Uh, throughout your journey, you will encounter Krampus's army of dark elves, and obviously, you will come face to face with Krampus himself. And the code name for this house was Schnapps, <laughs> which is pretty sure. great. <laughs> I'm psyched. I'm psyched for this house, man. Um, yeah. Like I said, that last 20 minutes is probably what they're going to focus on right there, with all the you know stuff in the attic and eating kids and all that. I, and the and I want to see what they do with the, yeah, what they <laughs> do with the actual Krampus. Yeah. Um, how like how that's gonna have to be pretty pretty big, especially with the the long horns he has. Yeah. yeah. But just rip off yeah. the Wolfman faces and stick on some creepy goat face. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Back to work. Yeah, and um, the uh, uh, oh, I just don't know. Yeah. Little, what the little Jack in the Box? Oh yeah, that's exactly what. Yep, that is exactly yeah. what I was thinking of. The Jack in the Box. That thing is the what I'm looking forward to Freak, the most. Dude. What if we were able? You know how every year, well, most years we have a, a house where you have to like crouch down or kind of get in a weird position. What if you have to crouch yeah. down and go through his mouth? Or whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> Man oh. just gave them a new idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, what if you had to crouch down, go through his mouth like his body? Yeah, oh. I I hope we get 
played this one on the Unmasking the Horror tour that we're doing. Oh, me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. But I was trying to picture last year, you know, the Alice in Wonderland, or I don't remember the real name of it, but when you walk... Asylum in Wonderland. Mm-hmm, exactly. So when you're walking in, when you're, you know, when you come into the building and you're about to head into the, like, the the first door into the house, but you're still inside the, sh- the, the building, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, the theater, mm-hmm. it's a small area. Do you remember last year how it was a very small area? Well, no, it was, it was pretty big. That was where the comic book uh, exactly. entrance was. But I, I thought mean, that was pretty big. For me, I felt like they would make this house look like you're walking up and to the house. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, that's a lot. If they're going to have you, like, the initial start of the house is you're walking into the house from the outside with the snow and, like, all the snowmen. I was trying to picture that. It's a very small area. So I wonder how you're going to start, you know. Yeah. But, they're just going to reuse the body collector's facade. <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's what you're saying. No, it's going to be a much right. smaller area. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, they uh, Mike also stated that this is a collaboration with the film's director Mike Doherty. So that nice. it, it's always cool when they bring in the the, the director to, to you know lend a helping hand on it. Um, mm-hmm. And he is also uh, pretty famous for directing the cult classic Trick or Treat, which uh, somebody said in the uh, in the Dead Man's Digest group wouldn't it be awesome if you know they had a uh, um, a trick or treat scare zone to go along with this house. Oh wow! Uh, you know, just yeah. have him on both of them. But actually, from what I've heard, uh, just today I heard a little rumor that uh, one of the scare zones might very well be Krampus themed as well. Hmm. So you get a little yeah. bit of Christmas outside, and if it's in the second Shrek theater, I'm thinking that would probably be that New York, uh, not not New York, the uh, Central that street right when you're walking in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Production Central, right? Yeah. So right. they're gonna double dip the Chance uh, House and Scare Zone, and then the Krampus House and. Yeah, where the Fairy Tales one was last year, not. Right. Yeah. So they would go together, kind of how like they did last year with Asylum, and then the, you know, Fairy Tales. No oh, characters in that you know, I didn't realize sense. that. Yeah, last year I didn't realize that the Fairy Tales. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> so. That kind of goes. That kind of goes with the theme of how Mike, um, said in I can't remember if it was Scare Zone or Frequent Fear how it's kind of like a continuation of last year, you know, with chance and some of the other elements that mm-hmm. are, mm-hmm. you know, with the advertisement and advertising and stuff like that. So that yeah. kind of makes sense that the scare zone would be right outside of the house as well. Yep. And, um, and yeah, I think everybody knows, but my favorite house of all time for horror nights was psycho therapy home for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just something about adding that horror element into the Christmas season is just awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's yeah. uh, I'm so excited for this one. Um, like I said, the movie's not great, but I don't think it really matters at all for this house. Nope. So one more thing. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think we're gonna get the big house facade? I mean, that's gonna be a pretty tight fit in that <laughs> in that Shrek house. Exactly. I know yeah. I've oh seen yeah, that's what Nina. Hollywood. Yeah, that's what oh, Nina yeah. said. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Gotcha. Shows how much I listen. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... but no, in Hollywood, in Hollywood, they're getting the big. It's it's going to be uh-huh. like an outside facade, right? Well, yeah, but that's what it, it that's what it seems like with Hollywood is Hollywood gets a big, huge facade for everything, pretty much. But then in the house is like, eh, you know, because they're all kind of like cue houses or you know, like tent houses, essentially. Yeah, that so. is the one thing that I like about Hollywood better than Orlando is like when you have actual houses like they had with insidious and stuff last year you actually walked like in through a front door and not like you're not yeah. looking at the front oh, of the house and walk around you actually walk into their houses so yeah that's kind of cool. yeah definitely um i think you know, it's just like logistics down here that caused such a problem with it and those, if those tents weren't as permanent as they were they, I, I think that they would gladly turn those things about 90 degrees <laughs> so that the actual yeah. front the actual entrance to the thing would be the front facade um, but yeah, it's like something they thought about too little, too late, I guess. I guess they can do it a lot easier in Hollywood too, because they have so many more sound stages than yeah. we do. So true, it's you know you can production. do something like that. Yeah, yeah, because so. they're doing actual production work there. Um, right. Yeah. The uh, uh, another thing that just came out recently, uh, speaking of scare zones, is that Hollywood is getting a purge election year scare zone. Um, mm. But they only announced it for Hollywood, which usually they announce things together. Um, right. But at the same time, they have announced scare zones for Hollywood on their own in previous years. Uh, I do mm. remember that because Universal like, uh, Orlando likes to hold back and wait to reveal the scare zones all at once at the end. Right. Um, so 
Uh, I think it's still possible that we'll get the purge, and I hope I definitely hope we do. Um, have we'll they done have that? Have they done that like that um, in Hollywood, where they held one back and they were the same scare zone? Um, yeah. Well, like I said, like Hollywood has announced a scare zone before, and I believe it was the purge as well. Oh, uh, uh, in the same previous year years, that we both got yeah. Purged? Yeah, Hollywood announced it before because they're um, they don't I don't I don't think they had as much to focus on you know uh, house wise so they they announced some of their scare zones earlier. Well, their whole scare zone was part of the terror tram, right? With the purge. Yeah. Uh, was it was it two years ago that they, they did the big tor- terror tram? Yeah, they've done a terror tram the one. Purge. Yeah, they've done a, a terror tram one, and I believe they've also had just a standard scare zone for it as well. Got okay. in two separate years, so. Cool. Uh, yeah. So hopefully we get it. We'll see what happens with that one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then another another little bit of news that uh, uh, Universal man, they always drop the ball on something. I swear. <laughs> but uh, wasn't Publix this year? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a little bit of information. Those uh, uh, annual pass flyers uh, went out, and uh, I we haven't got ours yet. Have you gotten yours yet? Yeah, I got mine a couple days ago and oh. yeah it's got that same page that's been oh. going around on twitter <laughs> yeah so we'll, we'll get in our soon uh, they, they kind of stagger them out but yeah they, they uh accidentally announced the name of uh, one of the original houses in there <laughs> um uh, talking about the early access for the pass holders which we'll get into a little bit more when we're uh when we start talking about uh, uh stay and scream later on in the show um yep. but yeah uh tomb of the ancients is what Cobweb, uh, the codename Cobweb House was. Um, is that people just guessing, or is that actually been no, confirmed? No, uh, it's it's confirmed because of the, lo- the location. Um, oh. Yeah, because uh, Mike Aiello said Cobweb was going into one of the sprung tents, and the early access area for annual pass holders are the two sprung tents and uh, um, the uh, parade building. So you're gonna get that would make sense. Yeah, to, this new one, Tomb of the Ancients, Halloween, uh, that's in the parade building, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre is gonna be the other uh, tent. Awesome. So, so what what do you think think this this Tomb of the Ancients is gonna be? Um, you think it's it's gonna be like something similar to something that they've done in the past, or? Um, well, it's not it's not the requel one. Uh, the requel is going where Body Collectors was last year. Uh, right. According according to the map that we've seen and just like the the hints and clues that Mike Allo has dropped, um, but uh, uh, speculation on Tomb of the Ancients is that it's uh, like Egyptian Catacomb. or mummy themed, <laughs> yeah. catacomb style. Of <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, I've, I've heard like Egyptian, straight up like mummy uh, themed. So yeah, but it's probably going to be like super dark and super cavernous. You know what I mean? Like a like a tomb. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, well, I really have no clue what you even think about that one. Yeah, and being uh, that it's in a tent, that's really interesting because... Well, you start off in New York. You have to go through the mummy queue, and then <laughs> you close your eyes, and then you walk over to the tent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you go through a secret entrance. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, they, they dropped the ball yet again and leaked some information before they intended to. Surprise. Um. So... Yeah, and then this uh, this map that I've been talking about came out, and uh, and yeah, essentially they've got where Body Collectors was is requel that hasn't been announced. That from what we heard was the uh, like the old west, the ghost town uh, house. Mm. We'll see if it actually turns out to be. The rest of the rumors are kind of coming true. So, um, uh, and then uh, the the Walking Dead in the Freddy vs Jason building. It looks like. Uh, along with the uh, American Horror Story, um, that's the one that's kind of halved, right? Yeah, that's the one that had Freddy vs. Jason and was it? Uh, Wait, well, Freddy vs. Jason and Body Collectors? Collectors were in the same one. Yeah. So requel, so the requel and the Walking Dead should Walking be in Dead, the same yeah. one. American Horror Story will be in the one. Um, American uh, London. American Werewolf in London. Yeah, yeah. and then The Exorcist and uh, yeah. But I don't, I don't foresee the Exorcist being anywhere near as big as the 25 years. And from what I've heard, American Horror Story was supposed to be the Uber house, the big house. So um, we'll see how that shakes out and see if those two don't get switched around. It's very possible. 
Um, and then, and then confirm Krampus in the Shrek building. Um, yeah. and then, yeah, from what we saw there with the, uh, annual pass holders, that puts the uh, Halloween, uh, the cobweb, which is the tomb of the ancients and Texas chainsaw massacre, uh, all together, which leaves the, uh, the new building for chances house. Huh. So makes sense. Yeah. That's uh, going to be interesting to see how they run all that back there. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a lot like it was before, I think. It's going to be a... Cluster. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Cluster F. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to decide. I mean, they have... You know, I know the houses up front look like they're pretty close together, too, but they have... It seems like they have a lot more space up there with the sound stages being up there and everything. Yeah, it's, that's going to be kind of crazy how they're going to run that in the back back section of the park. Yep. Yeah, and there's a big section that they can't do anything with, of course, because of disaster being down and and everything. Right, and, out. You know, <laughs> so, it, it, yeah, it's, it's weird looking at the map and seeing that big chunk of blank space there. But, well, what it's can you do? About a third of the park. Yep. Uh, so, so, yeah, that's about it for uh, for news that has come out. Um, so the next segment we were going to talk about uh, RIP tours because uh, I'm sure a lot of people are uh, doing it for the first time after they heard our glowing recommendation for it last year. Um, of course. Yep, and this is going to be Travis's first year doing an RIP tour. Um, yeah. So yeah, essentially the breakdown is there's two different kinds of RIP tours. There's the uh, there, there's a public one, a kind of a public and a private, just your standard RIP tour, and then a private RIP tour. Uh, if you're able to, the private RIP tour is definitely the way to go. Uh, the standard one is, I, I don't know the prices on it this year, but it's really not that much cheaper than the private. And uh, I think it's around 200 bucks, <laughs> if yeah. I'm not mistaken. And then, and then how much did you pay for your private one? I want to say Logan said it was around 1500 bucks, I think. Right. So, but splitting that up amongst, uh, you got 10 people going, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, all the spots are filled. So. Yeah, so about 150 bucks each. Yeah, which, I mean, the, the thing is, you have to get the 10 people together to do it. But if you do have that, right. then it's definitely the way to go. The standard RIP tour gets you through each house one time, not waiting in any lines at all, and uh, mm-hmm. it, uh, advanced seating for Bill and Ted. Uh, so you'll you'll go through all of those, and then you'll be released after that to to be like kind of be on your own for the rest of the event night. Uh, and you will not have express for the remainder of the event. Um, I, I really? actually, uh, for the rides, I believe you do, but not for any of the houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, now the private RIP tour is the one Nina and I did last year, uh, along with Lee and Tracy and, uh, a bunch of, you know, friends of the podcast. We all got together and we did it. Um, right. and, and basically I'll just walk through how it went for us is we, we went in, uh, and checked in in the uh, like the VIP um, tour group meetup area mm-hmm. above guest services. That's up abo- yeah, that's up above guest services right there. In the, yeah, off to the right hand side, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. So we went up there and we met our our guide. Um, and if he's working this year, just shout out for Ty- Tyler Leonard. Ask for him by name. He's awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can you? Re- Quests, you can you can it all depends on it's their schedule <laughs> yeah yeah it depends on their schedule and everything but if you've heard good things about them it's it's definitely good to recommend them even if you don't get them that's going to be like oh hey you know <laughs> yeah and then at that point you go upstairs on the second floor they have tables where you kind of get with your group and your tour guide and they also verify that you have a ticket for entries because your rip tour isn't your ticket to enter so you have to make sure you have one as well mm-hmm. um Right. And then um, at that point, you kind of all rally down and head on in. That's basically. Yep. And and you get to, they give everybody a free lanyard. Well, not free. I'm sure it's included, but you yeah. get a lanyard with it, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you get a you get a lanyard and a, like a little uh, plastic like uh, uh, RIP tour like badge mm-hmm. on there, which is awesome. a nice little collectible in and of itself. Um, yeah. And then with the private RIP tour, the cool thing is is it's your it's your tour essentially you tell them what you want to do and you have them from the open of the opening of the event to the closing of the event and we stay to the closing of the event. yeah um you like two other people right yeah. yeah 
yeah, us and Andy. <laughs> yeah, you do get a um, a, a half hour. Uh, well, you don't get it. The uh, the tour guide gets a half hour break from you. <laughs> At He's some like, point. Yeah, I need to get away from these people for, for a few. Days. Yeah, it's their legally mandated lunch break, so um, that's. So it. what do you what do you do while? Well, I mean, we, we, we ate. Tell you to go, yeah, go we somewhere ate somewhere up and then meet back up. Or? Um, well, we ate food and and it so turned out that you know the person that was doing our our too. tour was cool, you know, so we all sat hung and out. ate. Yeah, he hung out with us and and ate with us but you know if they're going to go off and do their own thing which is perfectly understandable they can drop you off right. at there or they actually have special bars set up just for the rip tours mm-hmm. um so one of them last year which i'm sure they'll have again this year was the uh the uh immigration room at men in black that was awesome so you get to hang out down there take some pictures and stuff and uh, i'm sure they can drop you off down there um and then go off on their break so you can just hang out and chill uh, in the air conditioning, you know, or relax, recuperate. So that's something you, that's somewhere you can go back to multiple times at night if you want to. Um, or is it yeah. just at the beginning? Yeah. No, no. If you want to, whenever oh. you want to go, you can go. Uh, there's a couple other spots throughout the park uh, as well. Um, huh. And like I said, it's a private bar, so you still have to pay for them, but pay for your drinks. Right. But you'll be getting them th- from a, one down there. You know, you don't have to wait any lines. Free liquor, you you crazy? Yeah, (laughs) but yeah, no waiting in any lines for it, so that's a bonus. You do get like free soda and water, though, right? Right? Uh, It's just the alcohol that you have to pay for, right? I don't believe you get. You didn't get any free soda. I didn't. No, I don't. I thought they offered you a drink or something. So you still got to pay for maybe when we first want a water. Yeah, I was thinking maybe when we first went up into the 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 VIP tour, but I don't even think even then. Um, yeah, I think you got to buy everything. Um, but anyways, yeah, and like we said, this is not express. This is walk you to the front of the house. Like, what's up? Right. We're here. <laughs> so, Move. no. Yeah, and your tour guide. Yeah, what else? I was gonna. Oh well, just just real quick, uh, no, your tour just, guide will gonna... will remind you that um, uh, you don't like don't like uh taunt the people that are in line. <laughs> And don't react to them if they're if you know if they're yelling stuff at you. They're like, just keep walking. Don't you know? Don't worry about it because yeah, people are in line for a really long time, and you're gonna just skip them. So, <laughs> did you guys get yelled at? Oh, uh, no, we didn't. We didn't really get anything we too. Just bad. got ugly looks. Yeah, a lot of dirty looks. But because wow. yeah, like they literally just stop the line like right there, and then you just walk in. So, <laughs> like ten people. I mean, I get. I guess I understand that people would be pissed off about that, but it's like it's not like you're like a group of like a thousand people or something yeah. that are coming through. It's only like yeah. ten people. Now the other thing I was going to ask, um, the one that you pay for, you know, not the private one. Do they walk you to the front too, yeah. or do you just get express on? Oh, they do. No, walk yeah, they they do walk one. you up there, but only you only get to go to each house one time. Um, but uh, with the private one, you That's can go back as many times as you want through whichever houses you want to go through. Mm-hmm. So we ended up we ended up going through one of our houses one of the houses four four or five times the twenty five yeah, years, years I think I think it ended up being five times because it was like eleven fifty two no not eleven wow. like one fifty whatever it was like eight minutes to closing we're like we have one yeah, more well, house what are we gonna do we're like twenty five twenty five we're just mm-hmm. over as many times as we could yeah that's awesome so um, yeah if you could like I said if you can get the ten people together. Um, then it's definitely the be- your best bet is to do the private one, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, it, it just makes so much more sense. It's, and you're it, with your friends. Yeah, it doesn't People cost much know. more uh, than than the other one. So, yeah, uh, so I, I think it actually might work out. Ended up being cheaper if you can get your ten friends mm-hmm. together. And like Nina said, it's a group of your friends. It's not like you know you. Are you and your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, and uh, like eight random people? Yep. So, yeah, it that's is, obviously going to be better, anyways. Yep, it is the optimal way to do it for sure. Um, cool. So yeah, I think I think we've pretty much covered all bases on there. Um, but yeah, just do remember that that is not your ticket into the event. It sounds like it is because it's a lot of money already, like 175 bucks or 150 bucks. Um, but it's really worth it. To, to not wait yeah, in any tour. lines at all it's just like you get whisked around from place to place it's it's pretty awesome you do feel like a celebrity for the night <laughs> <laughs> so awesome looking forward to that now yeah yeah 
So uh, let's go ahead and move on to some uh, some emails and uh, stuff we got off the Facebook page. Uh, I'll I'll take the first one here as from a you know a big fan of ours uh, named Lee Malaby. Who's this guy? <laughs> yeah, I don't know who he is at all. <laughs> right. Uh, he says, hi, Darren, Nina, and Travis. Great second episode. I just wanted to chime in on the video game house debate. <laughs> I think Dead Space would make an awesome house, especially if they managed to incorporate the Zero-G room. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Dead Space is, is another great one I didn't even think of. But, yeah, that, that would be another really good house, you know, like a space horror kind of thing. Yeah. Um, he uh, means zero gravity, right? Yeah, yeah, there because there's a section of the game where yeah, like basically all the sound cuts out completely cuz it acts like it really would in space. So there's no sound and and you still got the monsters coming after you and oh, you're in a section where the hole's broken and busted out so you can see space you, and you know there there is no gravity from point A to point B, so it's it's pretty cool. And no one can hear you scream in space. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> If they could get that working, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, he says, uh, also, I know a lot of people have been clamoring for a Last of Us house, which could be awesome. Um, I I agree on that one. I think it's I think it'll feel a lot like a Walking Dead house, personally. But um, right. And <laughs> he says, getting into the Walking Dead conversation, <laughs> I think uh, they could revitalize interest among Halloween Horror Nights fanboys by basing a house on the Telltale Walking Dead video games. Yay! Uh, I think the graphic style would work great in a Horror Nights maze. That would be cool to see, like, an art style like that, you know, uh, translated to a house. Because that's a thing now. You go on, like, Pinterest and Facebook that kind of make it look like it's comic book 2D art, but it's actually yeah, a like three-dimensional like person. Yeah, s- uh, cell shading. Yeah. Is that? yeah. How cool would that be? Yeah, that, that would be pretty neat. I'd rather them do Borderlands personally, but because I'm just done with Walking Dead. <laughs> um, he says, great stuff. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Lee. Love, your number red, one fan. Like, dead. thanks, boss. <laughs> you can do a Red Dead Redemption house. Remember that game? Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, because they, they had a DLC pack for that, like the Night of the Undead or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, where that where it was like all they introduced zombies into it. That would be cool. Maybe another one you could do with a with a light gun. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. If they can rig up horses for everyone to ride through the house as well, <laughs> that'll be their like omnimover system. <laughs> all yeah. right, yeah. Put them in for bid and journey. Strap horses to the You're in business. <laughs> there you go. My horse does a 360. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Yep. Uh, all right, uh, Nina, you want to do the next one? Yep. Next one's from the Facebook page that we have um, from John Precious. Okay, that was supposed to be Gollum. Okay, sorry. <laughs> 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 okay, John Precious. Should I do the scare actor dining experience? I wouldn't do it so much for the food, but for the photo opportunities, if there are any. Last year, I really enjoyed getting photos in the scare zones with the scare actors, but it seems that the practice has been frowned upon since there are a lot of questions as to whether those opportunities will or should be available at HH26. If the scare actors are not going to be willing photo subjects this year, would the dining experience be the next best thing? Um, yes, I mean, it would be. Uh, I still, I don't think you have to worry about not being able to take pictures with the scare actors. These characters will still be taking pictures with mm-hmm. fans this year. Um, as, as unfortunate as I and many others think think it is, um, I'm really on both sides of the thing because, of course, I wanted my picture with Jason and Freddie and stuff last year too. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I can say, oh, it's annoying that you can't walk through the scare zones and actually get scared anymore. But at the same time, oh, I kind of want those pictures too. So, you know, yeah, it's one of those things where it's annoying to you until you're the person that wants to do it. <laughs> it's fine. It's like a double double negative. Yeah. I, I think they, they handle it pretty good, though. They do. I see more times where they take a photo with someone rather than they just walk away. I would say 95% of the time they stop, kind of be creepy, mm-hmm. take a, you know, will stand, and then keep going. Very rarely will they just, like, ignore you and walk away. Yeah. Um, the yeah. the Shady Brook scare zone was a good example of how to do it right, I think. Oh yeah, and and uh, uh, with all the, uh, the past icons as well, that scare zone, in that yeah. you had some scare actors that were on stage and like just there basically to to interact with guests and take pictures, and to yeah. also be distractions for the people that were walking around on the street. So right. See, I'm not the type of person that would probably run up and get a selfie with them. I'm one of the type of people that are going to stand off in the background and just 
snap photos. So, yeah. I, mean, I guess it doesn't really apply to me, but I do understand that people would like to get the selfies. But there's there are some people that run mm-hmm. around to every single character and try to get a, a selfie with them. And that yeah. And also, it's really annoying. dark. So if you, yeah. yeah, if you have the money for the dining experience and you feel like, yeah, yeah. You budget it right. But then that's in it. Monster Cafe too, so that's gonna be pretty dark oh, yeah, as well. Right. <laughs> Um, but you know, they're willing to sit there, stand there longer for the picture. So you're going to get a better quality picture in there. Um, yeah, and you can use a flash in there, you know, you're not yeah. going to be annoying at people as much as in the scare zone when you're doing flash. You know, yeah. Flash and they won't have the fog machine going like crazy, you know, uh, blinding out your flash <laughs> photos anyways. Like any flash picture I tried to take last year just ended up being smoke because <laughs> <essentially>. <laughs> it reflects so bad in there. Um, yeah. but yeah, uh, oh, here we go again, plugging the scare zone podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, if, if you do go, uh, check out, uh, the one that they just did with the trackers, um, yeah. uh, Tim and Jen tracker, they talked about the, uh, dining experience. So, um, it's something to listen to, I guess, you know, to get a little bit more details on it. Um, they didn't really go into like specific details, but I've heard the food's pretty decent, uh, for what you're getting. And, um, and it'll get you into the park a little bit earlier. I think you're going to miss out on those uh, stay and scream situations, though, which we'll talk mm-hmm. about in a second. But I think this character dining experience keeps you in there until, like, the event opens, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I would look into That's that. That's something we got to look in. Yeah, look into and see. Is it like a buffet style deal? Um, yeah, I think so, but I don't think it's like an unlimited buffet. I think you like go through once and get like a plate of food. Gotcha. If I'm not mistaken, so you can kind of like they, don't. They got like it all laid out there, but you can only go through it one time, so you can pick what you want. Yeah, I think. So. Yeah, we, you'll you'll have to see, but um, they, uh, I don't think they had the Jack in there, um, f- for last year, so you can't guarantee that like you know yeah. the the stars of the shows will be there or anything. <laughs> Um, they had they a, a lot of the body collector guys in there. I saw. Yeah, and they had a couple of other icons show up in there. They had the usher in there. See, that's cool to see yeah. characters you wouldn't see in the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some that were actually like in speaking roles, and they had some of the chainsaw clowns in there. Oh, that's cool. Um, and and that kind of thing to take pictures with. Hmm. So, um, I, if you have the extra money, then yeah, it's definitely a good experience. But no, yeah, I, I would... want to do. You convinced me. <laughs> Um, what does it cost to do it? Have you looked at it this year? I have not, but it was have they pretty not pricey. I don't, I don't know if they have released details on it yet this year, but it was pretty pricey last what year. Are you thinking like seventy or eighty bucks? Yeah, or you know, it that, is. Yeah, yeah, and I, well, no, I think it was like, was it like fifty? Why do I 50 feel or like fifty six? Yeah, like might have, might have been somewhere around there, but um, over fifty dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and. And and that's in comparison to Bush Gardens, who was I believe it was twenty four ninety nine uh, for their uh, their food thing, and that is an unlimited buffet. The food is pretty decent, actually. Uh, desserts and drinks, non alcoholic drinks included in that as well. But you want your money back when you see the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, there's a show that plays during it, but no. I mean, that's neither here nor there when you're talking about the the deal you're getting plus you're getting express for two hours and you get into the 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 park a half hour before the event starts so they give you a lot of perks for a lot less money but that show <laughs> just kidding yeah, you can't it's worth that. it yeah it was it's very worth it yeah so so the the the, the show is while you're eating you can yeah. like eat real quick and they be like can i get like some extra time i don't know no watch no. The show. no yeah because it's when it's when the show ends is when you get released out into the park. That's why we sat at the very back. <laughs> um, yeah. By so, the doors. <laughs> so, yeah. So, none of us have personally done the character dining experience. It sounds like it's pretty cool, but I personally wouldn't spend the extra money on it. No, not that much money. Um, and, I, and like I said, I don't think you'll have any worries about being able to take pictures with scare actors. Um, uh, and especially if you do it earlier on in the night. When the when the sun's still out before the, you know you get the full sunset, then you're gonna have no problem at all. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, and Travis, you wanna read the very long next one? Oh God. Yes, <laughs> I'll go for it. All right, this one's from Chris Rook. He said, "Hi guys, listen to the, listen to the latest show this morning, and as a first time visitor to HHN this year, 
It was really, really helpful. Thanks for the tips. Can I ask a few follow-up questions regarding Stay and Scream? What time before the park closes should you head there? Uh, Number two. Well, here, let's... Are uh, we gonna, do you, want, you want to just go through them one at a time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what time before the park closes should you head there? Um, I believe they open up... Was it... They open up right at around four? Yeah, I think it's about an hour, hour and a half before the, the park closes. Because I think, I think the park closes at like five on HHN nights, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and really what... What's going to decide that is if you're going to go to a waiting area like Finnegan's and you want to eat, then go earlier, obviously. Yeah, I would uh, say probably two and a half hours before if you want to like get get a decent seat and actually mm -hmm. eat and everything like that. So. Yeah, and, but if you're going, you know, just want to do the sand scream just to get to that, you know, get to the first house faster, then go as late as you possibly can, like right before right before the park closes and they start doing the sweeps is when to go in and get in, into the uh, the holding area. Mm-hmm. Because any anywhere you are in the actual holding area is not you're not going to be too far back. Yeah, there's still yeah, gonna, most, people are going to swarm people run anyways. Yeah, I was going to say they're going to run like crazy animals anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and and a lot of people also will like hang out like um, in the Finnegan's holding area. You know, that's that whole street in New York essentially that you have, and and people hang out all the way up and down that street. Not too many people are sitting there packed up in the front waiting for the thing to open. So even if you're there like super late, you can still be one of the first people out of the holding area. Yeah, a lot of people don't know exactly where the gate's going to drop, but mm -hmm. yeah, we but know yeah, where it just is. pay attention to the crowd and just look around. You'll you'll be able to find it. <laughs> All right. Definitely. All right, number two, um, he says, is there a cutoff point where they won't allow any more people in? Um, not that I know of. I guess like there has to be some kind of a physical limitation eventually. Yeah, right. I mean, I want to say it may just be by, by I, you know what I mean? Just looking at how many people. I mean, I'm sure they they have counters or some sort. Mm -hmm. Probably when it gets to a certain amount of people in there, they cut it off. Yeah, but um, I if don't... it doesn't reach capacity, they may just cut it off at a certain time. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't ever, I don't see them like actually reaching capacity at those things. Yeah, we've stayed several times, yeah. and I never saw it get to the point where. It seemed like it even seemed Unsafe like it would be. Yeah. You guys also didn't go to the event later on. on so that's true. When it was like Hell Day or whatever they call yeah. it. That's true, that's true. Or Hell Week. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, I, yeah, but You're still, fine. even with that, I don't think it'll be too bad. Yeah, I would, it's it's more than likely probably a time. I would probably, probably say maybe 30 minutes before the park closes, maybe. Like around 430, 445, so that they can get... Because they have to check to make sure people are in there. And I'm wondering how... Like, what if you're just in there? Like, do not do they do... They don't really do a sweep before they drop the gates, I don't think. I don't well, they give they, you wristbands, really so I think if you don't have a wristband, they yeah. kick you out. No, yeah, they do. They they, they So they do a sweep before they... They kind of push everybody out, yeah. I got you. Yeah. So... All yeah, right. they, they do clear out the areas. All right. The, the third question was, once you're allowed out into the event, is it better to hit the IP houses first or the original? Trying to work out whether it, whether it's better to try and get two or three original houses with short waits or one or two IP ones before using our express passes. Um, well, here's the thing about that. Um, not all the houses are available. Yeah, you're not going to yeah, be able to, to just go anywhere you want. Yourself. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna walk you to your first house basically, <laughs> um, through each get through each one. Like um, the the Finnegan's holding area was Freddy vs Jason last year, so they they kind of walk you directly to Freddy vs Jason. You, you couldn't really jump out and, and head anywhere else. And there's random blocks throughout the park, you know, where you're not gonna be able to get past for a certain amount of time. And we right. ran into that last year. Uh, we actually had to like sit at a rope and wait to go through. Like we should have just gone <laughs> to like we we tried to we tried to subvert and go to another house and it didn't work out for us essentially. Which one did you try to do? Uh, uh, I think we were trying. To, I think we tried to go from there to twenty five years or something like that. I think we were actually on our way to go to the RIP tour at the guest services. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, we waited in a holding area and we were trying to get to the front of the park 
to to go to go for our tour. And they said no. Yeah, and we actually had to wait behind the rope there oh, really? until they opened up that section of the park. Until yeah. it was officially open. Yeah. So so yeah, that's what people need to know about scare uh, stand scream is each one of those is for one area, and you can start asking uh, um, uh, employees earlier on in the day, and they'll let you know which one. Yeah, I'm going to stick to my Finnegan's because I think that one's the best because you've got, you can get a drink or eat and then you can hit mm-hmm. those bigger sound, better soundstage houses. I love, I love that one. Yeah. So. so, but yeah, it all depends on what you want to do. Like if you can get o- over in that corner where the pass holders will be, um, uh, if you are a pass holder, if they have another area there like Springfield, uh, I believe was one of them, then you can hit those three houses pretty quick all in a row too. So it all depends on what your objective is. Alright. Um, yeah, you're just going to have to kind of map out, you know, which your ant- most anticipated house is, and I guess just stay in that one and stay in Scream. Hopefully it's, it'll be one of the first ones that open. Because does that one back in Springfield do the same thing, where it opens in, like, you know, different times? Like, they open a house first, and then open another one, and then another one? Yeah. Or is the Springfield house is different since they're so close? Um, no, the, I would assume yeah. that it's the same, right? Yeah, they they open them all. I well, like this year, for example, the the Tomb of the Ancients and Halloween Hell Comes to Haddonfield open at five thirty, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. opens at five forty five. So, but what? But the exits to the the queues on that one kind of lead you right into the uh, the next house. So, you can do those three houses mm-hmm. in succession pretty quickly. And then start I using your express. All right, well, we'll move on to four. Um, so it's probably a complete newbie question, but are there HHN specific maps showing where everything is included in scare zones and show times? And yes. Yes. And then go for a pretty penny on eBay after the event. So pick up a couple. We didn't do that. Or yeah. Anything. Didn't you grab like <laughs> fifty last year, Darren? No. <laughs> Yeah, but I actually kept mine. <laughs> Those are for me. Those are not for sale. Um, yeah, get your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're they're really cool uh, to have. So it's a, it's a free souvenir. You might as well grab a couple. Especially for last year's event being the 25 years. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's gonna be a nice keepsake. Definitely. Um. All right. Is that we good on that question? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. All right, number five, he says, finally, how easy is it to get current wait times for the houses? Is the in-park info accurate, or are there any other apps or sources of info you'd recommend? Yeah, the uh, Universal app uh, puts wait times for Horror Nights on during the event. So, And that's going to be what's out in, in front of the, the house. They're pretty accurate for that. And, I mean, those, they, they kind of vary wildly. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm pretty sure that on the official app, app last year they did have the wait times for the houses. No, no, yeah, they did, but and and they correspond with the wait time that's on the sign in front of the house. But oh yeah, yeah, I, I was that, just I, I didn't know if you had already said that. that yeah, that they were in the app too. Yeah, but I just don't know how accurate you can call those <laughs> because sometimes uh, you know it'll it'll say it's you know a, a long wait and you end up waiting a lot shorter. I think I think it's it kind of generally skews towards telling you it's going to be longer than it actually is yeah what's 65 in 80 minutes because you know but with the express it doesn't really matter yeah because uh, you don't know how long express is going to be that's never yeah, given to you yeah yeah express wait time is never posted and you should be ha- they try you should- to, they usually sometimes they'll say that it's usually half of what it is but you yeah. know you could have you could have one where it may be you know, way under, or mm-hmm. it could be more than half of what the wait time says. You never know. Those lines change so much because mm-hmm. yeah. there's not really, really like a flow or a pattern to it. Once you kind of get out of those stay and scream areas, people can just kind of go wherever. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to figure out flow. I'm sure somebody could fi- figure out how it flows, but yeah, I think going counterclockwise is probably always going to be the the. Because I think instinctively, as humans, everybody wants to go clockwise. <laughs> like initially, when you go through somewhere, like that's just human nature. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I think counterclockwise is probably your best bet for getting around that. But, um, but Chris, if you've been listening to our show, you should know you will have express passes when you go to the event. 
So that will, yeah, those post wait times should not matter for you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, exactly. But those posted wait times can t- sometimes tell you generally how long you're going to be waiting in the express line, too. So, yeah. Yep. If you're trying to manage your time with that, you can kind of use it as a rough guide. The message isn't over. Oh, he said, blimey, don't I ask much. Do- <laughs> don't ask much, do I? He yeah. said, thanks for the great show. I can't wait till October, and, and it helps with the planning and anticipation. Cheers, Chris. Mm-hmm. Aww. Yeah, awesome. Well, glad to be of assistance. Yes. If you have any other questions, definitely, yeah, yeah. shoot them out there again for us. Yep. And uh, if there's nothing else, uh, I can't think of anything. Uh, that is going to do it for episode three. Uh, remember, uh, to interact with the show, you can follow us on Twitter at Dead Man's Digest. You can also follow me at UUOP Darren. And Travis at Travis Terrell 12, T E R R E L L 1 2. Um, you can also email us at deadmansdigest at gmail.com and uh, join us on our Facebook Facebook group called The Dead Man's Digest. It is a private group, but just a request and I will add you immediately. Um, so for Nina, Travis, Lee, John, and Chris, I am Darren, and I hope everyone was good this year because you certainly don't want to be on Krampus's list. Ha <laughs> ha